Hey everybody, I hope you had a beautiful day. Uh, this is part four of the coronavirus. Deep state pandemic, that's what I'd like to call it. And I'd like to ask you a question just before I start. You know what? Every time that you put somebody else in charge of something important in your life, how does that work out? How did it work out that we put the medical system in charge of our health? How's that worked out for most people? Not really good, eh? So what happens when you actually give your life over to your government? You give your life over to the medical system. You give your life over to big pharma, okay? Understand something. We have been asleep on the job. And guess what? Until you're awake, you'll never know that you're asleep. So you know what? If this kind of wakes you up or disturbs you, I really don't know which way it's going to go. But the reality is information is the key, okay? And knowledge is the key or else we can't make proper decisions. I hope you enjoy this last video I'm going to share with you today. And then also join me tomorrow and I'll be with Peter Webb. And we'll be going and doing a live Q&A on frequencies and radionics and how you can protect yourself. And how you can keep the fluids in your body structured and how you can protect your mitochondria. Have a beautiful day. That's what happens. The viruses are not what kill us. It is a overreactive, weakened, dysfunctional immune system. That is the point here. And that dysfunctional immune system unleashes chemicals that go attack your own tissues. In the case of Ebola, you go attack the arterial your endothelial and you start bleeding. In the case of corona or viruses like that, your, your cytokines go attack your lung epithelial. That's what's going on. And maybe Anthony Fauci knows this, but you got to understand something about this Fauci fellow, okay? He's been involved for a long time in promoting himself as a guy who has solved major epidemics. Okay, remember the HIV AIDS stuff? We can do a whole talk on this, but I can tell you right now, and you can talk to my professors at MIT, that HIV does not fulfill Cox postulates for creating AIDS. It was one of the biggest scams that was done. And anyone who questioned that, like Peter Duisberg, an eminent scientist, was called an AIDS denialist by the mainstream media. Let me repeat this again. What is AIDS? Very similar to immunosuppression. It's suppression of the immune system, acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Peter Duisberg, you can look him up, one of the earliest guys to get tenure at at Berkeley, one of the earliest people to be admitted into the National Academy of Science, a decorated scientist, he basically challenged this whole thing. He said, I don't see HIV, this virus, causing AIDS. In fact, Mr. Fauci was part of this. He created his name as a guy who really understood the HIV pathogenesis to AIDS. But the reality is, if you actually study it, the entire immune system model breaks down on that. So Fauci got himself from the Reagan administration, then to the Bush, Obama and you go down the thing. So he's been there. He's a lifer. If you look at someone like Hillary Clinton here, who Fauci is very fond of, I just tweeted this out, Hillary Clinton's Clinton Global Initiative, you know, which is totally pro-vaccine, raised about $313 million R&D for new vaccines. The other players we have now involved are people like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates, people who think they're the saviors of the world. When, when people like Gates had shares in Monsanto, he thinks he's going to come save the world. It's a model where he believes vaccines are the way. And Zuckerberg, whose wife and him have started the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative, a for-profit, which they started the Biohub with nearly one to three billion dollars to support vaccines. And what's most interesting is you have now Zuckerberg, you know, having conversations with Fauci. Let's just be, just be clear. Mr. Zuckerberg is the one who's out there thinking he's going to control the internet and he's the one who's going to decide what is real health you know and what is fake health what is real science and fake science that's what's been uh that this is what you see you see some very interesting players the zuckerbergs the the gates foundation etc but when you put all this together it's about this agenda of vaccines 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 now getting back and closing before i take some questions remember i told you that the sustainable agenda, uh, that three countries were highlighted as the countries that were doing the most amazing work. So remember I told you that this, the sustainable goals agenda, they highlighted three countries which they believe are achieving all their goals. Well, Sweden, 
Denmark and France are among those countries. Now, just to give you an idea, one of the countries, Denmark, which is supposed to be doing so well just on Thursday, which means about 72 hours, which means yesterday, just Denmark rushes through emergency coronavirus law. And what is that law? Denmark's parliament on Thursday night unanimously passed an emergency coronavirus law which gives health authorities powers to force testing, treatment, and quarantine with the backing of the police. Let me read that. Let me read that again. Passed an emergency coronavirus law which gives health authorities powers to force testing, treatment, which means vaccinate you, and quarantine with the backing of the police. So, the UN believes these three countries, like Denmark, are the gold standard in where they want the world to go, okay? So people like Denmark are the gold standard where they wanna go. And that's where they want the world to go to achieve this utopia, we're all gonna have to get vaccinated. So I'm telling you that what's going on right now, the health policy in this country is being led by Emperor Fauci, who's been in government since Ronald Reagan, who came up with a mistaken concept of HIV's correlation to AIDS, which was another fear that was done. He was in with SARS and Ebola. This guy's been all the way through. And what he's doing right now is so medieval that he's flattened everything in terms of everyone should be quarantined. Everyone. Forgetting one of the most important things of this immune system, that the immune system in the normal case of people who have healthy situations, and as we're doing right now, we have 380 trillion viruses within us. It's not the viruses that kill and harm us. I repeat this. This is a fake science. And whether Fauci knows this or not, I'm telling you that it's not the viruses that kill and harm us. It's a dysfunctional and weakened immune system. So how do we solve this? Well, if you, one of the most important things is we know vitamin A creates a cytokeratin which protects the outside of our cells. So it protects, uh, you know, viruses from coming in. You know, there's been great, you know, stuff done in the clinics where with, if you give someone 400,000 units of vitamin A, you give them 50,000 units of vitamin D, in two days, you knock off the virus. But no one wants to talk about that. It's always about a Western medicine drug-based approach. You know, now there's chloroquine on. Okay, that's a big one, right? But it's a drug. But there are nutritional approaches to doing this. And why is it that in this world right now that the only solution to everything is drugs and vaccines, drugs and vaccines, Zuckerberg, Gates, and Clinton, Zuckerberg, Gates, Gates and Clinton, and forget traditional systems of medicine. In fact, they poo-poo when people talk about food. They poo-poo when people talk about herbs right? Why is that? Is it a dysfunctional view? Is it racist? Is it that they think we're stupid? I, I'm not sure. But I can tell you that there are many, many ways for us to strengthen our immune system. And it's not that we need Bill Gates. It's not that we need Mark Zuckerberg. It's not that we need Hillary Clinton. And it's not that we need the UN telling you and I what to do. And that is a danger. Because when you have something like this, everyone, this is what I call fascism. This is fascism in practice. When people can come into your homes and force vaccinate you, they can start force testing you and force quarantining you. This is not the America that my parents left in 1970 to leave the caste system where only a few people knew what was good. And this is what's happening in this country. There's no reason for this. And even the economists know what's happening is disastrous for this country. They are willing right now to have the United States government use quantitative easing, which means what Obama started, printing money, to use that money to circulate in to the banks who, and the government, which will buy bonds and give it to bankers who will just loft up, the, you know, keep up the stock market. That's what we're talking about. And this was started by Barack Obama. He didn't let the banks fail because he himself is a globalist. He supports this agenda. And instead of letting his buddies in Goldman Sachs fail, we are now printing money as a living. And what is that doing? What that's doing is that's created the biggest income inequality because all that money got printed, it got taken, it was the biggest transfer of wealth to the elites 
who shoved it into the stock market, we didn't see that much growth. And the working people in this country's value has gone down and down and down. We've become a consumer economy. We don't produce anything. And one of the important things Donald Trump was trying to do, whether you like him or not, was trying to bring back manufacturing here, trying to bring back intellectual property here. But at this time, the global elites in this country are frothing at the mouth because their agenda, and listen very carefully, is they would rather tank our economy where we print $4 trillion, $4 trillion of our dollars. And think about this. Imagine 7.2 billion people. Imagine, according to their agenda, we should all be vaccinated everywhere. So let's say 1000 bucks per person. That's $7 trillion per year. $7 trillion. That means they're willing to tank the U.S. economy. It's an investment for them of $4 trillion now destroy the working people in this country so they can reap seven trillion per year. I don't even want to talk about conspiracy. Just look at the dollars. It's right there. Immunization, immunization, immunization to achieve this utopia. That's the BSPR. And Anthony Fauci is leading this effort because he is part of Big Pharma, the Zuckerbergs, the Gates, the Clintons, all of them. And we as the American people we as the American people are being taken for a ride because there is a medical way through this. There is modern medicine that is beef up our immune systems. Let's talk about all the lawyers and lobbyists who have destroyed the air, the water and the food in this country. That's what they've done. And they don't want to talk about that. What they've done is destroyed the microbiome in your gut of your kids guts. That's why we have nearly, you know, 54% of kids with autoimmune disorders. I don't see a state of emergency for that. We have nearly 30% of people in this country with obesity. Where's a state of emergency for that? Where was a state of emergency when H1N1 hit? Immediately. I didn't see that. But right now, we're all put into this fear. And that's where we're at right now. But this does not have to be, you know, the way forward. The way forward is to understand science, is to understand medicine, is to understand that the body is quite resilient. It was designed to support us. And this is where we are. They want to use fear to create fiction. And from fiction, we get fascism. And from fascism, we're all frozen. We're incapable of fighting for freedom. We believe in scientific consensus, fake problems, fake solutions. And you have to ask yourself, do you want this or do you want this? That's the question before all of us. Do we want freedom? discussion, scientific method to get to truth so we can solve real problems, so we can have real infrastructure. Let me make it very clear. These politicians don't give a damn about infrastructure. Remember, it was in the late 1800s where people, working people who worked their butts off, protested, built movements, the American working class. And that's how we got infrastructure. That's how we got nutrition. That's how we got vitamin A. That's how we got sanitation. And that's how we reduce infectious diseases. Sorry, Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates. We don't frankly need you. What we need is infrastructure in this country. That means, give you an example, I repeat this. Massachusetts is supposedly center of technology. And you can go look at California, the Bay Area. People are shitting out in the streets. And Massachusetts, we have an F minus minus in crumbling infrastructure. Dirty air, dirty water, dirty food. Where's the emergency on that? So I think it's about time we woke up and I know the economists are watching this and they support me because they have Emperor Fauci there willing for his. He's really the ambassador for the vaccine manufacturers. They want to immunize all of us. And mark my words, if we don't stop this now, next year, all of us are going to be vaccinated, vaccinated. We won't be able to get driver's licenses. We won't be able to move around without forcible vaccinations because this is their agenda. You actually believe that your government works for you? So essentially, we've destroyed the doctor-patient relationship now. We are cattle, and we're being treated like that. It's really a warning signal to the rest of the world that is watching this issue. If you are not going to demand to get your freedom and your rights and to keep them, you're going to lose them. This is information that we all need to be sharing.